All right, welcome back to InfoGamer. In our last video, we talked about creating the movement for our snake, and we weren't able to finish it all in that video, and so we're going to work on it a bit more in this video. And so in the last video, we created two different scripts, our game controller script and our snake script. In our game controller script, we talked about the switch statement and getting direction to our the way our snake moves, the direction in which our snake moves. And so now we are going to make it so that the movement is perpetual, that it keeps moving rather than just moving to the next position and then spawning a bunch of snake objects there. And so let's open our game controller up again and our snake and let's get to work. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to our snake script and we're going to work on this. We should be able to get this entire script written in this video. So for now, what we need to do is create a new variable and it's going to be a public for now. And we're going to have it be a snake variable. So we're referencing another snake script in the current snake script. So we're going to call this next. And this is kind of like a linked list, if you know what those are. Once you have your next variable created, we need to create a getter and a setter. And so we're going to type, and so we're going to type public, and this is going to be a void and we'll type set next. And inside the parameters are going to be a snake variable type and we're going to call it in. And then inside this, we're going to say next, whoops. Inside this function, we're going to type next equals in. Now we need to create the getter, and so this is going to be a public, and we're going to have a return type of snake, and we're going to call this get next. And there's no parameter, and inside we type return, and then we type next. And since we have this getter and setter functions, we can actually make our, sh our next snake variable private. The next function that we want to create is a public function, and it's going to be void, and we're going to call it remove tail. And so this is going to destroy, and then in parentheses we type this dot game object and semicolon. The last thing that we're going to do to this script for now is get rid of our start and update functions. We don't need those in this class. And so we're going to go ahead and save it. And now we can go back to our game controller script. And then we want to go down to our movement script. And below our last line in that function where we instantiate a new snake prefab, we want to set the next variable of our current head snake object to the new instantiated object. So let's type head dot set next and in parentheses we're going to give it the snake component of the new object that we just instantiated. So we type temp dot get component and in carrots we type snake and then outside the carrots, we type parentheses and we end with a semicolon. So this takes the new instantiated snake object and saves that into the current head dot set next. So the next variable of the current head. Then what we want to do is reset the current head to the temp object. And so we say head equals, and we say temp dot get component, and then snake and parentheses. The last thing that we can do for this function is type return and semicolon. 
This is everything that we need for our movement function. Now we're going to have a couple other functions in this script, so let's stay tuned for that. Let's go ahead and save this and see what it does in Unity. So we already attached our game controller script to an empty game object in our previous video. So if you don't, if you didn't watch us do that, make sure you go check it out. And we have our snake component attached to our snake prefab. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if it works. And yes, it works. So every time a new cube is instantiated, it's going to the next position. It's being perpetually moved to the next position. So if we go ahead and hit play and we select our game control script and we change the direction that we're traveling, in this case, let's now pick two and we hit play, it's now going to grow down the screen. Now let's go ahead and pause this real quick and see what's happening. The last object spawned was here at the bottom of our hierarchy. If we look at our inspector, but we change it to debug mode, we can see the next value. And right now it's none because there's not another head after this. But if we go to the one before this, you'll see that there is a snake component in the next variable. And if we select that, our head snake is highlighted. If we go to our game controller script and we select our head component, you'll see that it is the last object that was instantiated into our scene, which is the head of the snake. And if we go to our game controller and we select the tail component, it is the first snake object that was in our scene. In other words, the tail. So our tail's back here and our head is down at the bottom. So the last thing that we're going to want to do for this video is make sure that we save this scene. We didn't save it in the last video, so we're going to save it now. So I'm going to change the inspector back to normal mode, and then I'm going to go File, Save Scene As, and then select our Scene folder, and I'm going to type Game Scene. Let's go ahead and save it, and make sure that it's in our folder, and yes it is. And that concludes this video and our general movement script. In our next video, we're going to be going over direction, how to change the direction that our object is traveling, or our snake is traveling. And so make sure that you stay tuned for that. So like and subscribe, leave any questions that you have in the comments below, and share with your friends.